Good evening. This is the day of Pentecost, the day when uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon the believers. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you on this day for the fact that you care so much about us that not just did you create us, not just did you redeem us through your Son, Jesus Christ, but you also sent the Holy Spirit, part of you, to be with us and in us, to guide us and give us the ability to know how to live. So, Father, thank you for that fact that you are with us this day, not just by being next to us, but actually by being present within us and that you'll be within us for all eternity. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to read two scriptures this evening. The no seams are a little bad. If you see me dancing around, please forgive me. All right. But the two scriptures I'm going to read you are the gospel and the reading from Romans, but I'm not going to read you the story of the Pentecost because I can't say all the names on how all the languages they said. So I'm just going to read these to you. First reading comes from the book of Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The gospel for this evening comes to us from the gospel of John. It reads this way. Jesus said, if you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. You know, believe it or not, today is my father's birthday, June 5th. Uh, it was interesting because I mean, D-Day was June 6th tomorrow. Uh, and uh, back in 1944, he was on a carrier waiting to go, you know, on the beaches um, on his birthday. He died 56 years ago. He would have been 108 years old today had he been alive. But it was interesting because I'll never forget, he died when I was 16 years old. He was 52. And I'll never forget that when he died, I, I thought it was so unfair. I'll be up front with you. I, all I kept on thinking to myself, this, you know, why did my dad, who's a good guy, why did, why did you take him, God? Why, you know, that's, why didn't you take some bad guy? And my dad's a good guy. Why'd you take him? You know, I'm glad that uh, my father had taught me a lot of things before he died because his words resonated in me every time I used to say, this isn't fair. And, and he used to always say, yeah, Jim, whatever you learn, learn one thing. Life's not fair. You know, I'll be up front with you. In my life, the people who cry out, this isn't fair. This isn't fair. You know, this whole thing, it's unfair to me. You're unfair to me. Those kind of people in my life, in my experience at least, are people who are very, very spiritually shallow, if not almost non-spiritual. They may talk a good game. They may know the Bible. They may say they believe. They may do a lot of things. But if you say that it's unfair all the time, then you really don't understand the concept of what it means to be 
living in the spirit while we live in this world. There's always, there's that old saying that, you know, you got to take life on life's terms. You know, I mean, that's what it is. Life on life's terms. But the one thing that I think that I've learned over the years is you might have to take life on life's terms, but I go back to the other saying that used to be, life is difficult, but God is good. And so I want to coin something, a phrase. Life might be unfair at certain times, but you meet life on life's terms. But even more than that, you meet living on God's terms. You meet living on God's terms. And life is made up of all kinds of things. Good, bad, indifferent. It's also made up of death. Because death isn't the opposite of life. Death is the opposite of birth. And it's all life. When you're spiritually sound, when you're trying to mature, you finally get that across in your head. And you finally realize that God created you, put you in this broken world, but he didn't put you in there alone. The gospel's real clear that he sent the spirit, the advocate, the spirit of truth to be with you. And it's not just gonna be, in a sense, with you, it's gonna be in you. The reading from Romans makes it clear. You've not been given a spirit of slavery, but you've been given a spirit of adoption. You know, on this day of Pentecost, there's a couple of things that rarely is preached about. And one of the things I think that's rarely preached about is the fact that on the day of Pentecost, when the spirit of the Lord comes into you, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit, when it comes into you, it's given to you at that point, and one of the main things it's given to you is you finally belong. You don't have to join. You don't have to perform. You belong. And when you finally come to the conclusion that you really do belong, even though you might not do everything perfectly correct, even though you might make horrendous mistakes and bad choices, all of a sudden there's something that goes on inside you that transforms you because you live more and more into the identity that was given to you because when you're adopted, you get a new identity. And that identity is you being a child of God that God so loves that he gave his only begotten son to bring you home, to bring you into him. Now, you receive that Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth which is called the advocate, the comforter. It's called a lot of things. But one of the things that that gives you is power. Now, it's not power like we have in this world. It's not like you have power because the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is given to you for one reason, and that is so that you can be more effective in serving God the Father and give glory to him. The gospel was very clear about that. You know, I'll do whatever you ask, if you ask in the Spirit, so that we can give glory to the God the Father. And, and so you're given this power to learn how to serve, but it also teaches you and allows you to live on God's terms. Live by his commandments. Love one another. It's not conditional. It's where if you really do love God, then you will love others. It's not like, well, you got, you know, you got to do this to get this. No, it's when you do love God, you, you love others. You embrace life. You no longer keep saying, it's unfair. I didn't get a good shake. I, it's, it's unfair. That's wrong. This is, I, I, you can't do this to me. You don't blame anymore. You start getting moved away from denial. You move away from blaming. You move away from all that stuff that's nothing more than blah, 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 blah. And you embrace a new life that gives you qualities of love, peace, patience, kindness, faith. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you actually operate on a daily basis where you try and get away from worry and fear as much as you can. 
Because the Holy Spirit has been given to you so that you have the power to get rid of worry and fear as much as a human being can. And it's given to you because you get to then choose between do I worry or do I trust? I got to ask you a question. Do you worry or do you trust? I mean, really, what's going on inside of yourself? You know, I mean, what, what kind of day did you have? I mean, if I describe my day to you, I'll be real up front with you, you know, and probably Sally will kill me. But, you know, we've been dealing with rodents. And I mean, I'm talking about, you know, those four letter word rodents, you know, that start with an R, you know, I mean, and, and every time I think I got it managed, it doesn't get managed. And all day today, you know, I was sealing up holes and everything else. And once again, I got done and all of a sudden we found another place. In the midst of that, let me be up front with you. All of a sudden, Sally comes out and she says, the air conditioning doesn't work. It's a Sunday. Our AC guy is a friend of the family's. He's in the Florida Keys. And the air conditioning doesn't work. I don't know about you, it was pretty darn hot today. Luckily, what happened was I didn't lose it. I kind of just sat there and almost started saying, well, what do I do now? Maybe I should burn the house to the ground. But instead, I did the best I could with, let's just say, my four-legged friends. And then I started to think about it, and Sally and I talked about it, and there is, in an AC system, there's an automatic switch off if the drain doesn't work right. I've done it before, so I got some hot water, two gallons of hot water, and poured it through the tube, and then sucked that thing out with a wet vac. Guess what? It smelled, it stunk. But our cells and the rodents, we have AC now. I guess what I'm saying to you is this. Why worry? Things aren't in control. I don't have control over my own life all the time. I don't have it going my way. I don't have a lot of things, but I know this. I meet life on life's terms. And I trust God, so I meet living on God's terms. This is Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has been given to you. What are you gonna use it for? Are you gonna use it to try and meet your own needs? Because if you do, let me tell you something, ain't gonna work. But if you use it to bring out the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, to serve a power greater than you that's personal with you, that actually part of him is in you. If you use that in that manner, then you will find distinctively where you won't have too much time to worry and you'll have a larger and better ability to trust. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit prays for you within you when you don't even know how to pray for yourself. I love you. I love you. I love life. I mean, I really do. I love life, even though life is difficult, even though life doesn't always go my way. But living, I get to choose on whose terms those are, and I choose the terms of God. We meet life on life's terms, and we live on God's terms. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.